Good morning, everyone. What a great day for a celebration in Lexington. And here we are crowding the winner's circle again. We are here today with 5th District Council Member Bill Farmer to celebrate and dedicate Clay's Spring Park. The neighbors have been working on this park for a very long time. We have some of the neighbors with us today who have helped make this possible. Now, if I'm neglecting anyone, you all forgive me, forgive me. But Ben Elder and Bill Cowgill Jr., Bill's not here. Penny and Robert Warren, Penny and Bob Warren, Diana Polito, Don and Barb Wathen, they're not here either, but I've got their name down here, Jessica. <laughs> Paul Pastor, Paul's not here either, Michael Daw here, John and Linda Price, and Brian Potter, who will speak in just a minute. Now, I know I left some of y'all off, so forgive me, but I want to welcome representatives of Ashland, Jim Clark, Executive Director, and Eric Brooks, who've been working with everyone on this project. With this park, we are preserving a big part of our history. The park is the site of the original spring on Ashland, the Henry Clay Estate. And we are preserving green space in a developed neighborhood. This park is also special because of the public-private partnership that has made it possible. Councilmember Farmer will tell us more about that partnership. Councilmember Farmer. Mayor. Yes. Mayor, thank you for being here. Thank all the, uh, the neighbors for being here too. And yes, this is a great partnership. And it's, it's always a pleasure to represent any part of Lexington, but this neighborhood is special to me. I live here, uh, and, but this neighborhood works together so well. They, they have a great time, and they have at least one really good party every year. <laughs> <laughs> and when is that? It's, in, it's already it's, scheduled. It's upcoming. It's in it's September. It is in September, oh, isn't it? Okay. Well, Penny brought donuts today. <laughs> it's a giving neighborhood, as I was about to say. <laughs> but they have worked together, and invested in a space that had been overlooked and to a certain degree forgotten. It's a special part of Lexington. Water is so important and in Lexington it continues to play a role. But this neighborhood and what is now a quiet preserve here next to what is still the Shriners Hospital in a place close to Henry Clay's home. And the work that went into this among this neighborhood and others and many who helped and contributed. And when you look at the work that's been done to remember the history because it's so important that we remember our history and that we understand it. But I would just say, Mayor, that this spring that, that was here, it potentially it could have flown the other way, but I think it's it's the headwaters of Town Branch myself. <laughs> and as the headwaters of Town Branch, it's the beginning of something great that is still going to go on in downtown. We're looking forward to that too. But today we're here to celebrate the neighborhood and the great accomplishment here and I appreciate you all being here. Thank you very much. Well, Councilmember Bill Farmer knows a lot about Henry Clay. In fact, he has stood, and any of you all who watch GTV and the, his, the programs that Bill Farmer has on the channel, they're wonderful. And one of them, he is up in a scissors lift, looking eyeball to eyeball with Henry Clay. 130 feet in the air. 130 feet in the air at the monument, the Henry Clay Monument in the Lexington Cemetery. So now he is here with his water source. <laughs> now we are going to hear from the neighbors. And Brian Potter has been appointed a spokesperson because he's president of the Neighborhood Association and he's going to tell us more about the neighborhood's work on this park. Brian Potter. Mayor. Yes, sir. My name is Brian Potter. I am president of the Neighborhood Association by virtue of showing up last at the annual meeting. <laughs> Next year I'm going to take my wife's advice and not have a cocktail before I go. But uh, this, this project has been an ongoing project for the last three years. I started with the money from one project actually being diverted to this project. I worked on it three years. Uh, with Ben Elder is uh, basically the brain and the brawn of our neighborhood association. And he's the one that uh, really has pushed this project forward. Uh, other neighbors have been very instrumental with uh, donations and physical help and planning and the whole project. So just want to thank the press for being here. Thank Mayor Gray, Councilman Farmer, and all the neighborhoods for coming out this morning. And thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. 
Ben Elder said that uh, Brian is a Brian is a veteran neighborhood association president. I can tell you, he was president of my neighborhood association at one point in time before he and Nancy moved over here. So he is a veteran of this. Y'all have gotten a grip. All right. Next, um, I'm going to introduce Eric Brooks. Now, Eric is curator and site manager at Ashland, the Henry Clay Estate, and he will share with us more about the history of this particular spot, this particular place. Eric? Thank you, uh, Mayor Gray. It is an honor to be here. I've been very honored to be a part of this project, and I thank Ben for contacting me and asking me to. I have long thought that what has been done here has needed to be done, because this is an incredibly important spot. Over the course of years, a great many important things may have happened at this spring. In 1817, or shortly thereafter, some of the first Hereford cattle in the United States may have drunk from that spring. In the 1830s, Henry Clay may have washed the blood from the side of his dying horse after it was gored by a bull, uh, tossing him several feet away, perhaps in this location. Later on, two of the great mares in thoroughbred history may have grazed here, mares whose descendants include 11 Kentucky Derby winners. Mambrino Chief, perhaps the greatest standard bred stallion in the history of that breed, may have drunk from this spring. In 1902, Allenadale, the horse that won the Kentucky Derby that year, may have drunk from that spring. It was bred and owned by Thomas Clay McDowell of Ashland. Now, I should note that that horse was the last to be ridden by a black jockey to win the Derby. The family understood the importance of the history of this place and of the farm. And when development became inevitable and they were forced to confront that reality, they made great effort to ensure that as the farm was broken up and turned into residences, that it was done in a way that would preserve the character of the farm it had once been. If you drive through the Ashland Park neighborhood or the Ashland neighborhood or Chevy Chase or this neighborhood, you'll notice that streets aren't always straight. And that's because the family wanted to ensure that great trees that grew on the farm were preserved. So they went around them instead of over them. Uh, you'll notice the islands that exist in the roads, particularly in the Ashland neighborhood. Again, they prize green space and wanted the people living there to have part of the farm on which to enjoy themselves. When they developed the neighborhood, they decided that this piece, this one acre, should be saved because of all the important things that may have happened here. And so on December 29th, 1954, Ashland Park Inc., the company formed by the family to develop the neighborhood, deeded this land to the city with the proviso that it be used in perpetuity as a city park. I think that shows incredible foresight. It would be great if in today's world development were done with such care and concern for the past in creating a future. The family did that. What we are today is because they had the foresight to make it so. And it is great that we stand here today to honor that by returning the name to this place that it should have had all along. That people can come here and learn the history of this important place and dwell here listening to the birds and thinking of what might have happened in the past on this property. Eric, you, that was great. Uh, great tribute to Henry Clay and tribute to, uh, and a record of all those uh, events where the spring might have been used. It, and am I correct, was it one of Clay's entrepreneurial activities that he was a distiller as well. I'm told that. He had a wine cellar, and he certainly consumed the products of distillation. <laughs> he consumed the products. <laughs> he made said Well, products. I see. Well, it may be uh, apocryphal. Had then. he made said products, things might have turned That's out different. That's what had <laughs> At any rate. I was thinking that he may have distilled some of his bourbon from this creek, from this spring, rather. Not the creek, the spring. All right. Next is Michelle Kosuniak. Kosiniak, I'm sorry, Michelle, I've got a little pronunciation problem there, forgive me. Now, Michelle, I've known a long time, and she is one of our extraordinary park designers, and I'm going to ask Michelle to talk to us about Park's role in the project. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Mayor Gray, and thank you, Councilman Farmer, for inviting me here today. Um, I've been at Parks for 17 years, and I care. We have over 100 parks, and, and I love and care for each one of them. I feel like it's my duty and responsibility to be a steward for each one. 
There is something special though that happens when the neighbors care too, and we work together in partnership with the government, with private entities seeking grants, and celebrating spaces like this. Uh, so one, one of the speakers today mentioned that this park had been overlooked a little bit, and that's the condition I found it in. And so I always wanted to make it a better place, um, and I was very excited when the neighborhood approached me. Um, I'm honored to have, to have been part of this, and I look forward to, to doing more here as the years go.